the last area that I wanted to touch on is if you have any words of caution for weekend retreaters. And I bring this up because many of my friends have experimented, have gone on with retreats, have gone down to Peru and been on these ayahuasca retreats. And when I hear about some of these experiences, they, you know, some of them sound amazing, but some of them I'm like, whoa, what, what, what are you doing? Where are you going? How, how are you, you know, verifying that these people are credentialed? So I, I, you know, I'm curious to know what words of caution you have for folks who may uh, want to have some sort of experience like this. Yeah, so I certainly am very careful always to say I always to say I, I I don't encourage the use of psychedelics or any other compound. I mean, even caffeine, you know, uh, you know. However, I'm happy to tell people what we know scientifically about what separates riskier from less risky use and. Certainly, if someone is going to use, there are a number of things that's going to, you know, make things safer, relatively speaking. You know, knowing the knowing something about the people that are going to be around them. I mean, this is best done without strangers and in a situation where there's some sort some rapport that has built up between the the people that are going to be helping them through it. Um you know, hopefully those people aren't intoxicated themselves on the substance or anything else. Um, there should be something known about the substance, the identity of the substance they're taking and about the dose that they're taking. People are, are you know, even though something like psilocybin is relatively safe at the bodily level, there are exceptions. It does raise blood pressure. People at high risk for cardiovascular disease can can be harmed even could die i mean there are examples of it they are admittedly rare but um people can potentially die through i mean these are people in the category that you know shoveling snow or other you know daily you know going up flights of stairs could push them over the edge and prompt an event um if they're you know very you know uh, susceptible so having a physical, including um, knowing their um, uh, cardiovascular status and risk, um, would be you know someone who knows that they're not at 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 the cardiovascular risk, you know, is going to be relatively speaking at less at risk than someone who doesn't hasn't had that evaluation. Um, you know, doses, you know, all else being equal, lower doses are less risky than higher doses, even having the ability to judge what that dose is. Um, some, you know, kind of uh, eye towards looking at what medications that they're on, including ones that may have interactions with with um, with whatever compound they're looking to take, um, making sure that they're monitored during the entire time. Um, and then just, you know, trusting, I think I already mentioned this, but it's worth this extra mention, you know, Really, what is known, especially when someone's flying off to go to a retreat, you know, what is known about the individuals, you know, uh, I mean, there are reports of, you know, sexual assault and other, you know, um, and, and, and just, you know, poor clinical care, being left alone during times of crisis, this type of thing, um, during psychedelic experiences, so... There's a whole lot, and and nothing I say could be an exhaustive list, but you know one would be well advised if they're you know doing something like this to know as absolutely as much as possible to do as much homework as they can and to and to uh, have as many factors in place to be on the less risky side rather than the more risky um, side. But again, there are dangers. There are dangers even if one maximizes all of those things. So I'm not, it's not like I'm recommending it. <laughs>